I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Batman issue number 17. Bane has come to make war in Gotham, and he's brought some old friends with him. What lengths will Batman go to to save his family? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? All right, so as we open up on the comic, they waste absolutely no time reminding you just how serious this situation is. Batman has gone all the way to Superman's Fortress of Solitude to drop off Nightwing, Robin, and Red Hood. Yeah, freaking blow me down, but apparently that fake out from the end of the last issue where we saw all the sidekicks hung up by their necks. Yeah, turns out that wasn't actually a fake out. They're not dead or anything, but Batman is certainly going out of his way now to make sure Bane can't hurt them again and or use them as leverage in the upcoming fight, and because of it, he's gone out of his way to put them on ice under Superman's protection. You know, you would think if Batman cared so much about the safety of his sidekicks and extended family, he would just ask Superman to come to Gotham and deal with Bane for him, but you know, if he did that, the comic book would be over. Now, much like in the previous issue, I think Tom King does a good job excelling at showing how talented he is in writing the other members of the Bat family who aren't Batman himself, especially Alfred, who is just as catty and wonderful as ever. King even remembers, oh yeah, wasn't Alfred like an actor, like a really good Shakespearean actor before he was a butler? Maybe he should use some of those skills to help get Gotham Girl inside Arkham. The plan is for Psycho Pirate to put Courtney's mind back together. Granted, this is going to be a very long and involved process, taking up to four days in which time everyone will be completely vulnerable to attacks by Bane. Also, hey, nice touch of continuity right here. This is one of the first times we actually get to hear Psycho Pirate speak more than a couple words, and guess what he starts going on about? Oh, so many changes, so many worlds, it's so tiring. Keep in mind, for those of you out there who don't exactly know your DC Comics lore, one of Psycho Pirate's powers is he's actually aware of all the different retcons and reboots that have happened throughout the universe. Now, Batman has set up a perimeter on the roof of Arkham Asylum, and he's ready to protect Alfred and Gotham Girl from any attacks. It's also an excuse for the artist to be like, hey man, look how freaking cool I can render Batman on this rooftop, ain't this great? And yeah, I agree. So all in all, it seems like Batman has covered all his bases for the upcoming Bane attack, only here's the issue though. Batman assumed that Bane would be working alone. Instead, he's decided to send his favorite agents, Zombie, Bird, and Trog, aka his henchmen back from the original Nightfall storyline. Wow, what a deep pull. They've all been amazingly redesigned here and go about kidnapping all of Batman's friends who are still around. First and foremost, Catwoman, who is still hanging out at that orphanage that is just so damn important to her story right now. And then Commissioner Gordon. Only Gordon gets rescued at the last minute by the intervention of Duke, who I guess is becoming more of a Robin than he thought because he's going against Batman's wishes to stay in the city and help people out. Not that any of that matters, though. Bane is a very handsome on sort of villain, and when his henchmen can't get the job done, he decides to handle matters himself. And speaking of Bane, can we talk about him for a second? He's always been my favorite Batman villain, if not one of my favorite villains, period. He has just such a cool design, and even though he's been through some real rough patches recently, King does a really solid job returning him to his previous splendor. For one, he's dropped the stupid movie-inspired coat and the stupid Arkham Asylum-inspired tanks. As the comic winds down, Batman is shocked and appalled to see Bane across on the other rooftop, having kidnapped Bronze Tiger, Jim Gordon, Catwoman, and Duke, and holds them hostage so the Dark Knight will come and fight him. Batman number 17 was an issue that I ultimately enjoyed. In fact, that's two issues in a row. I dare say Tom King is starting to win me back after losing me with I Am Suicide and that two-part Catwoman story. This story is really starting to get reminiscent of Nightfall in a good way, but then again, isn't that DC Rebirth in a nutshell for you? Kind of remixing old stories in new and interesting ways. I love seeing the old henchmen again. I love Alfred and the other members of the Bat family kind of getting to spread their wings and do their own stuff. Much like the previous issue, I find it interesting that Batman himself is probably the most minor player in his own story, but hey, when it works, it works. That's the strength of this world and these characters, isn't it? Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10, and I am totally on board to see where this story is going to go from here. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a support of mood you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please by all means check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.